Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's video. I'm really, really late with today's uh, video. We're going to have a look at the weather next week to 10 days. We'll also have a look at the CFSB2 uh, for the next month. That'll take us into the start of December. Now, I did video yesterday speculating that we might be seeing signs of colder weather uh, coming along for the second half of November into the start of December. Those hints are still there within some of the model output, so I'll talk you through uh, the models in a moment. Just say that the Christmas shop is open, so if you've got any Christmas shop to do at Amazon between now and Christmas, all you have to do is click the green button that says Gaz Christmas Shop. It will take you to our Christmas shop page, and then from there, the key to it all will be to click through the Amazon banners. And because you've gone from Gaz Revenue to Amazon, we will get a revenue fee on the things that you are buying. So a big thank you to everybody for doing that. You've got plenty of time to get Christmas shopping in, of course, we're only in the start of uh, November will be plugging this uh, up to um, Christmas. So uh, do your Christmas shopping at Amazon via Gaslovids and uh, you'll be helping us to pay for our website and you'll be getting your Christmas presents as normal. We won't be doing anything uh, different. Big thank you to everybody for doing that. Uh, right, we're going to start off Central England temperature and then we'll have a look at some indexes. We'll finish having a look at CFS. Uh, the two. So the um, central temperature for November is uh, in. We're currently standing provisionally to yesterday, 6th of November, currently standing at 8.8 .8 degrees, an anomaly of 0 0.7 degrees uh, above average. So this is coming down very quickly uh, now. A few days ago, this was running over well over a degree above average, but now it's just 0.7 of a degree above average. And um, I wouldn't be too surprised by the end of the weekend whether this is actually a little bit cooler than average. wouldn't be all that surprised if it was. October, of course, a very warm month, came out at 12.4, an anomaly of 1.7 degrees above average. So we've lost about a degree in terms of the uh, overall anomaly. We've lost about a degree um, and uh, now just 0.7 of a degree above average. So um, we'll wait and see where that goes. But it is looking like a rather cooler month, I think, uh, this November. Right, this is the Arctic Oscillation Observed and Forecast chart. The black line here tells us where we've been with the AO. The uh, red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the AO to go. Back to the summer, we've been generally in positive condition with the Arctic Oscillation, although we did go a little bit negative there in the second half of September. October was either neutral to positive, and that's continued into November as well with strong positivity of the Arctic Oscillation. Notice the red lines are doing a bit of a plunge, though. They're suggesting a collapse in the AO is possible as we go through into the middle part of November, that period just there. Now, when the Arctic Oscillation is going negative like that, it's telling us that we may be starting to see high pressure building up over the pole, and that high pressure can be the route to pushing cold air out of the pole and down into the mid-latitudes. Now, it's not a guarantee that we're going to get that cold air because it always depends where the high pressure is sitting. So, wherever you've got a cold side of the ridge, you also have a warm side of the ridge. So, we might get unlucky and find ourselves on the warm side of the blocking feature. But, wherever that blocking feature sets up, somewhere is going to get a push of cold air out of the Arctic, as long, of course, as that blocking feature does set up. There's a strong, there's strong support for this uh, negative plunge in the uh, AO that we see here. But just because there's strong support doesn't necessarily mean that it's correct. It might be that all these ensemble members are getting it wrong and we won't eventually see uh, this ridge building up over the pole. But fairly good agreement, certainly within the Arctic Station observed and forecast chart, for some sort of blocking feature to be developing into the second half of November. This is the NAO and it's same idea, the black line here tells us where we've been with the NAO, the red lines where the NAO is being forecast to go. Instead of looking at the Arctic, this is the North Atlantic oscillation. So this is looking at um, pressure di uh, di distribution, the deviation between Iceland and the Azores. Through the summer, the uh, NAO was generally in quite a negative state. Uh, quite interesting. So we have the two indexes out of sync back in the summer. Uh, the AO was generally positive, NAO was generally negative. They've come into line through October, so 
generally positive with the uh, NEO as with the AO as well. And right now, this is where we are, and we're positive with the NEO just as we're positive with the AO. So both the indexes are positive. You see that the GFS ensembles, these red lines at the end, are forecasting NEO to go negative. So we've got both the indexes being predicted to go to negative territory through the middle and second half of November, this just period just here. And this could well be a sign that building up high pressure over pole uh, and changing the pattern across the North Atlantic as well. And this could be a signal for something colder to begin to develop into uh, the second half of November. Having said that, it's not overly mild at the moment. So these are the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're just looking at London today because I'm running late. I haven't got time to uh, talk you through all of the ensemble data that we can look at. So the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. Cooler than average today. Uh, going a little bit milder than average, though, into the middle part of the week. But then the temperature dipping down again at the end of the week and into the weekend. Maybe a slight tick up there early next week, and then cool again through into the second half of November, this period just here. And overall, looking at this ensemble graph, you have to say, it looks like certainly for the southeast of the country, temperatures are trending on the cooler to colder side of things, and at times going really uh, quite cold, certainly for November anyway, to be taking the ensemble mean almost down to minus 5 and 8, 50 HPA uh, in the first half of November down in London. That is quite impressive. So it does look pretty cool already, even if even without any northern blocking, looks like we're into quite a cool uh, period. And more unsettled as well, quite interesting. A band of heavy rain is coming through the country today, and that could linger overnight in the southeast, give really quite a wet night. Uh, a couple of drier days there, and then looks unsettled again. At the end of the week and into the weekend, drier briefly with this colder interlude just here, and then more rainfall coming through next week. So quite cool and quite unsettled appears to be the outlook, certainly going up to the middle part uh, of November. However, not really that well reflected with the anomaly. So this is a temperature anomaly from uh, the 7th to 15th of November. This is based on the midnight run of the GFS, which I think might have been a warm uh, and dry outlier because you can see that temperature anomaly is actually coming out average to very slightly for England and Wales anyway above average it's not a big deviation let's say we're very close to average but given that ensemble uh, that we see there I would expect that it's thing to be a bit, a little bit on the cooler than average side the only thing that could account for this is a lack of particularly cold nights it may be that despite the upper air temperatures and the overall weather pattern being quite cool, because there's quite a bit of rain around uh, and weather fronts coming and going, and probably fairly strongish winds at times as well. It might be because we're not seeing uh, a lot of cold nights coming up, and that really is the feature to getting substantially cold temperature anomalies, is to get cold days, but also to get cold nights as well. Nevertheless, I'm a little bit dubious about that, and I expect this to be trending cooler, uh, this chart, I should say, to be trending cooler over the coming couple of days. Precipitation anomalies also, I think, um, look a bit, a little bit suspicious. So you'd look at that and think it can be quite unsettled uh, period uh, to the middle part of November. But the precipitation anomaly is average to drier than average. So again, a little bit dubious about that also. I think these, uh, will, these uh, anomaly charts will probably be trending cooler and wetter over the coming few days. This is how the GFS is looking for Saturday, Ben. We've got a cold front moving southeast across the country. That's probably going to bring band of wet to over Friday to Saturday. It turns the wind, once that's gone through, into the northwest, which brings another shot of cold air from the north. So by turning it through to Sunday, again, we're pulling the winds down from the north, very similar to what happened last weekend. The only difference, probably, is that this could be a little bit colder, this northerly, because it's a colder time of year, so a, a cooling time of year, I should say. So with each one of these northerly shots that we get... 
further on into the month we go, they probably start getting more and more potent. Uh, so this one might be a little bit colder than the northerly shot that we had over the weekend. It could well bring wintry showers to uh, parts of Scotland, possibly northeastern England as well. That northerly is quite quickly cut off as high pressure collapses down across the country by Monday. We're looking mostly dry, probably with some quite hard overnight frost. And then as we go through to the middle part of next week, turns unsettled again. That ridge flattens off, low pressure starts come back in off the Atlantic. That no doubt bringing quite a bit of wet to weather uh, with it. Into the second half of next week, an increasingly unsettled look to things. And we're up to day 10 now, which is Friday the 17th of November. With below pressure then clearing out into the North Sea. And again, look at this, got another shot of northerly winds uh, coming down. Uh, and again, that one might be a little bit po a little bit more potent than the northerly shot that occurs this coming weekend. So you see, as we get these northerlies coming through, each one gets a little bit uh, colder than the previous one. Beyond uh, day 10, we start to set up quite an impressive blocking feature. So this is Saturday the 18th of November, a real northerly then coming down across the country. That could be bring uh, wintry showers even down in towards parts of the Midlands and eastern England, I would have thought. Uh, and then we're setting up quite a big area of high pressure over Greenland, up to 1,070 millibars there. I'm not sure you quite make that out, but it is going up to 1,070 millibars there uh, across Greenland. So that's quite an impressive block then that it's uh, beginning to develop. Still looking unsettled. Um, so quite a lot of wet weather coming in with this. The cold air, of course, is on the northern side of these areas of low pressure. So um, we're more or less on the mild side of the low pressure still. But that's a very long way off. I've run out too far. We're beyond day 10. We're up to Tuesday, 21st of November. Um, so uh, don't take that at all seriously, the position of the low pressure and the block. I'm just showing you that to give you the idea that within the model, there is still the idea that we might get quite an impressive blocking feature developing to our north as we get into the second half of uh, November. ECMDF looks like this. So again, agreement that we, have, that we are going to get this northerly shot over the weekend. Uh, proper northerly there for a time, Sunday into Monday, before the high pressure collapses across the country by Tuesday. Winds are starting to back round into the west again. That's probably bringing milder, wetter conditions into the northwest. But the south and the east could be frosty by night. Into the second half of next week, again, sea levels are when it turns increasingly unsettled. Low pressure this time by day 10 is centred to the west of Ireland. Notice again we have got signs of heights rising generally to our north and how those heights, if they do lift up, they are forecast to do so by the Arctic Oscillation Chart, of course. If those heights do rise to our north, how that interacts with these areas of low pressure will be the key as to whether we find ourselves on the mild side of the block or whether we find ourselves on the cold side of the block. Finally, just have a look at charts CFS V2 for the uh, next month. So these are the 500 millibar height and always broken down into wheat peers. The first wheat peer taking us from the 7th to the 13th of November. Low pressure is up to the northeast. High pressure is out to the southwest. And we're on the cool side of the jet doing something like that with the flow and with the jet stream. So pretty good representation really for what we're just looking at for the week ahead. It looks quite cool and quite unsettled as well. Week uh, 2, um, 500 bar height anomalies from the 14th, 20th of November, look like this, low pressure out to the northwest, really raising the heights to the east and to the northeast. This is still just about placing us on the mild side of the jet. We're doing something uh, a bit like that. I think it's quite a bizarre looking chart. But uh, look how the heights are rising there up to the northeast, particularly centering around Svalbard. It wouldn't take too much at all to start to push much colder air down towards us. We go through to week three, which is the 21st, 27th of November. But that area of above average heights is pushing more towards Greenland. Low pressure is becoming cut off down there and uh, we're doing something a little bit like that with the flow and with the jet stream so uh, i think we are beginning to bat the wings into 
an east south easty type direction there for week three. And then week four takes the ridge just to the northwest of the British Isles, which I would have thought could well be could bring down colder air from the northeast. The uh, CFS is still going for this idea of quite significant blocking developing through the course of uh, November. So if this ever comes to anything, we're going to have to wait and see. It may be that we're being led up the garden path here with all of this uh, blocking. But as it stands today, things are still looking quite good for... I mean, we're cool at the moment anyway, so we're already quite cold. We're getting these Norway shots coming through periodically, which will be getting colder each time they push through. So that's the first thing to say. But then for the latter stages of November, we do still have these hints of quite substantial blocking, trying anyway, to set up uh, over the Arctic. And if that happens, then we could really begin to see something quite significantly cold uh, developing right towards the end of the month, possibly lasting into the start of December as well. So all looking quite interesting. We'll keep you posted and updated, of course. Uh, tomorrow we've got 5D forecast, and obviously we'll be keeping an eye on the weather in the more extended range as well. So keep checking back for all the updates. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.